Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Gilbert Marciano. So I'm working in, in Nokia, France. I'm in charge of the marketing for France and for the Orange Group in, uh, in uh, Nokia. Sorry. There is a small. So I want to, to speak about the, the 5G and what is the link with the augmented reality, virtual reality. In fact, we think that uh, the democratization of this kind of technology to be accessed by the maximum of people uh, in on, and also by the enterprise, uh, the 5G will contribute. It's a technology enabler which provides a kind of liberty. This liberty, this freedom, in fact, is linked to the wireless. So that means that you, you can benefit more about uh, intelligence in the cloud to be able to, you know, to have uh, lighter uh, devices, for example, uh, to, uh, n no need to have a very uh, powerful PC, very close of the glasses. Uh, you, you don't have uh, any wire. Uh, you can remove this wire thanks to this technology which offered, uh, and I will show you, the characteristic in order to be interfaced with uh, such kind of application. And this is the promise of uh, 5G. So let's start by uh, an appetizer with uh, something that we uh, present in, uh, this year in the Bobiro Congress in uh, Barcelona with Intel. In fact, we uh, create a virtual reality game uh, using the 5G, where you have uh, two players on the booth of, uh, of uh, Nokia and two players on the booth of uh, Intel. For this uh, use case, we are using partners like uh, Create VR, which is a, uh, an American uh, company which are doing the, 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 the game. And we are using the content from so Sony Entertainment because of the, the promotion of the future movie on Spider-Man. So I want to show you uh, quickly a short video about uh, this achievement. This really is the next step. It's bigger, it's crazier, and just like the movie, our VR experience is going to go bigger. This really is the next step. It's bigger, it's crazier, and just like the movie, our VR experience is going to go bigger. With our partnership with Create VR, Nokia, and Intel, we are delivering the world's first multiplayer VR experience over a 5G network to Mobile World Congress. If you look at 5G, it's the ultra-reliable, low latency, and the, the massive connectivity. As a result of bringing all of that computing much, much closer to the edge of the network, you're now able to deliver much more immersive, much more personalized experiences. What I want to see is queues of people lighting up to, to be Spider-Man. In virtual reality, the power that you need can only be delivered by Intel. All of our Sorry for this. Uh... This really is the next step. It's bigger, it's crazier, and just like the movie, our VR experience Woo! is going to go bigger. With our partnership with Create VR, Nokia, and Intel, we are delivering the world's first multiplayer VR experience over a 5G network to Mobile World Congress. If you look at 5G, it's the ultra-reliable, low latency, and the, the massive connectivity. As a result of bringing all of that computing much, much closer to the edge of the network, you're now able to deliver much more immersive, much more personalized experiences. What I want to see is queues of people lighting up to, to be Spider-Man. In virtual reality, the power that you need can only be delivered by Intel. All of our workstations have Intel Xeon scalable processors in them, and they've been really proven to be invaluable. For Mobile World Congress, we were approached to turn that into a multiplayer experience. And that's where Nokia comes in. With 5G, you can actually have all your friends, you can have a gang of people, all of you playing together and having fun in a whole different way. Now you can have almost real-time interactions. 5G connectivity combined with computing at the edge of the network will unleash an entire new generation of immersive, rich media experiences. It's so fast, it's so seamless, it really shows what you can do in the future. We've put together the best team possible. 
with all these great partners to deliver the greatest VR experience. That's really where we're going, is that we're always going to be pushing the bounds of, of where you go next. We're going to have multiple players interacting. They can see each other. It just makes that experience that much more fun. Together with Sony and Nokia, we're very excited to bring the Spider-Man Far From Home multiplayer VR experience to the world. So, you see this appetizer only to, to explain where, where is the direction. So the 5G is a giant leap. In fact, in terms of uh, number of users, we are able to manage not only the people, but also uh, the objects, the Internet of Things. So the promise of 5G is to be able to manage one million objects per square, uh, kilo, uh, square kilometer. The speed we will be uh, 100 faster than in, uh, than in 4G today. We've, uh, we can reach uh, in a peak in a cell up to 10 gigabits per second. In terms of latency, today, or if you measure a good latency on the 4G system, is around 50 milliseconds, 50. In, uh, in a certain condition in 5G, you can go less than one millisecond. That means it's, it's instant. And instant. Today, if you see in US how they mention the 5G, they say the fiber wireless, because we are able to, ha to reach very, very low latency, which is very important, you will see, for uh, the VR and AR application. Also, one thing which is very important is the quality of service. In fact, we have a mechanism in the 5G which is named the network slicing. The idea is to uh, have some kind of logical networks on the same infrastructure. And each uh, logical network will be able to support one use case. And for example, you can have one specific uh, uh, use case for the gamer, and the gamer is asking for very low latency, for example, for autonomous car, for the public safety, but you can have also some best effort as we have today with the 4G. So the network slicing is also very important in the way to propose application, for, especially for the, the, the community of gamers or, for example, for Industry 4.0. So re really, what is very important uh, to understand, it's uh, that we are reaching, in terms of capacity and latency, uh, really we have a very uh, leapfrog in th with this technology. In fact, we are able to address a lot of uh, different use cases. And uh, you see what uh, we named here, extreme mobile uh, broadband, it's the 10 gigabits that I mentioned. Massive type of communication, it's the IoT, Internet of Things, like I, I mentioned, with one million objects per uh, kilo, uh, square kilometer. And the critical machine communication. This point is very, very important for Industry 4.0. That means that we, are, uh, we can guarantee the reliability, especially in interfered environment like a factory, for example. We have also, um, with the critical m machine communication, this low latency. And it's very important to understand that now, in the factory, in the past, they are using 4G or Wi-Fi only for kind of uh, back office applications in front of uh, to make some uh, maintenance tasks, but not critical. All industrial proce uh, process are done using uh, the fiber. Now we can remove all the, the, the cables. For example, in a car manufacturer, they can uh, remove all 100 kilometers of, of cables for the robots and control all the robots with the 5G. And this is also with the virtual reality and augmented reality. Today you have uh, very nice technology in terms of headset with uh, the PC, very powerful PC and so on. So we can imagine that we can lighter this mechanism with a headset which is only a kind of uh, uh, with a, a, a graphical processor inside, but all the intelligence, and we will see it at the edge of the network. What is important is to think about, when you think about the mixed uh, reality, it's not only the bandwidth. You can say, yes, I will do a volumetric uh, 
uh, augmented reality, so eight camera in a 4K, and uh, it's uh, 10 gigabits of, of data. How I can process that and so on. What is important in uh, in the in, in the, the way we proceed is that only we transfer on the on the communication link only the bandwidth that you required for your eyes. That means that all the data which are registered with the eight camera are not transmitted on the link. We transmit only what is required uh, to have the motion in control. You see? And so today in the, in the glasses itself, you have something that you cannot uh, decrease. It's what we name the motion to phot photon. It's the headset itself. When you move your, your head, you, um, you, you have a certain time, and this time cannot be uh, less than uh, 15 uh, milliseconds. But for the streaming of the video itself in the, in the headset, you can have uh, uh, decrease a lot with the 5G, which is very important, in fact, for all of this kind of application. In fact, here you see the, the curve of the stream data, and here the, the curve of data which are generated by your captation. And what is important doing that is that we can be very fast. And doing that, we can make real time in the VR and AR application. It's not only a software which are running with a, a software which is predefined in, in your headset. You can have direct uh, communication between the people which are in the captation area and to the uh, end user. So it's good, for example, for the uh, what we show with the virtual gaming, for example, with the multiplayer. So really, the challenge is that, and where, when uh, you have a very low latency, you can generate 10 times uh, bandwidth sa saving. So here is some example, uh, in fact, of what we named the edge. What is the edge, in fact? We have two, two, um, two ways to proceed for the communication with the cloud. Either you have a data center very centralized, which are uh, covering all the needs of application every year to cover the maximum of users with the maximum of quality, like Netflix, for example. Or you want something very uh, uh, stringent in terms of uh, latency. In that case, you can decentralize and have very close of the antenna of 5G, the intelligence. And this intelligence will be able to uh, cover, for example, in a stadium, the need between multi-view camera and what you can see on your uh, tablet or, or uh, headset. You have an uh, application that you can have very close of the, of the antenna in order to cover museum and so on. You can have also the same thing for the cloud gaming. So you, you have one part which is in the, in the internet, but a lot of, uh, of um, um, the application could be very close of the end users. It's the same for the control of some drone and so on on some campus. So here you see the benefit of the 5G and of its architecture. Now I sh explain you the fundamentals of the 5G what is bringing in terms of uh, technology enabler. Now what is interesting is to see in practice what does it mean for consumers or for businesses. For consumers, so we see in fact uh, two, two segments. One for the, for example, uh, the, the concert, the sport event, all these uh, crowd events where you want to, uh, uh, for example, in the fan zone, provide a kind of uh, immersive experience. But it could be also one guy which is uh, at home be able to uh, uh, assist in, fr in, uh, in 360 uh, to a concert which is uh, in Stade de France and so on. So it could be also remote, thanks also to the communication and the 5G. It's also the gaming industry, as I mentioned, with cloud gaming and so on. And here we see that the, there is an evolution, and the technology of uh, uh, mobile is, evol is evolving with the evolution of your VR and AR um, technology. So today, we are more in this, uh, in this area where we are able to provide 360, 4K, and 8K video, make uh, game streaming for the mass market, cloud gaming, and also some experience in, uh, uh, with the hologram. And, uh, 
next step with the network slicing, which uh, arrive uh, in, uh, I would say, two years uh, from now. The possibility to make real-time volumetric video and over more complex, complex um, use case in VR or in AR. So I want to show you two experiences. One uh, for the uh, holographic, for example, experience. We did that with AT&T, which is a very big operator in US for the Dallas, um, uh, Dallas match, where we did, we did a kind of a 3D augmented reality hologram, uh, uh, a nice experience. And uh, we, we did also with a uh, partner that we have here in, uh, in France, which is uh, in, uh, incubated in Station F, it's uh, Mimesis. And also where we make a, a remote concert with a, a musician on stage in a, in a remote area. And the, the people which are assisting to the concert are able to speak with him. It's a real-time communication. That means he sees the hologram of the, of the singer and are able to ask him, uh, please uh, sing this song. And we did this experience with uh, our partner, our customer, Orange, in uh, Varsovie, but also in Belgium this year. So I can show you one of these uh, the two experiences. I hope <laughs> it will be more what we did uh, in AT&T. Where else but AT&T can you dance your way to 5G? Right here, baby. We're bringing a live 5G system to the venue here for the fans to experience this holographic dance-off that you're seeing. And with 5G, what you get is a massive capacity where you can have users doing massively data-intensive activities in a fraction of a second. Our volumetric capture stage uses eight real sense cameras placed all around in a circle. And that's a ton of data, and it's capturing you in three dimensions. And what we're doing is then beaming all of that data up into the cloud for you to view on any device in augmented reality. So another experience which is quite uh, interesting because you, you see the scenario are uh, very different. We have one with the uh, uh, hologram with a volumetric video. Here it's uh, also interesting because it's linked to the haptic. That means that you can also use some device in the communication with Taiji and use this latency in order to control uh, the, the movement. And here it's an uh, interesting thing that we did uh, in um, Las Vegas this year for the CES with a, a new way to, uh, to play the Remix, uh, famous uh, Rubik's Cube uh, game. I can show you. Oh. It has been done also on the booth of uh, Intel. So what we're talking about with 5G is how we can bridge the physical and digital worlds together. With 5G, which has very, very low delay in the network, to be able to create these brand new experiences. You can see here is a physical Rubik's Cube. So when I turn this Rubik's Cube, you can see the information that's synchronized from the device here through the network into the cloud, processed in the edge in real time, and displayed digitally to me. So now I'm actually bridging the physical world with the digital world together, and that's through the power of 5G and edge computing giving us extremely low latency. So we see here some examples for the more the consumer segment. Now what is very important also is the industry and more and more. And in fact, we are uh, already, uh, for example, collaborating with our Orange customer in France. We have a common platform to develop use case for verticals for industry. And uh, augmented reality and the virtual reality, clearly it's uh, something very interesting in order to reinforce the skills of the workforce, for example, and things, uh, things like that. So 
Here, uh, for example, for the training, for the training, I can give an example, for example, in the medicine. You can have one uh, student which are stu studying on the, on the maquette the, the possibility to make an endoscopy. You know, it's very uh, sensitive operation to do it uh, for the first time. And uh, instead of using a real human, we can use a, a, a fake, uh, a fake, uh, je sais pas comment dire mannequin. <laughs> mannequin. And so the idea really is uh, with the glasses. I don't know if you see the, 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 the series, uh, The Good Doctor, but <laughs> it's the kind of uh, things that you can see inside where the doctor is operating, making remote surgery or things like that for the training to train the student. And um, so uh, for the safety also, for the maintenance and so on. So there is a lot of application of VR, AR in the field of industry. Um, and uh, of course, the 5G will be there to, pr to provide the capacity for the video transmission from the cloud. So the idea really is not to be confined in your headset and to have all the, the, the data in the headset, but really to make a communication between the headset and the cloud and to have access to all the knowledge that you need. And the, the knowledge of, uh, for the car manufacturer, for the medicine with all the, the file for the IRM, for example, all these kind of, of things has a huge uh, volume of data and this will be very good for the, 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 the people which are using this data to have it in real time directly on their uh, headset. And uh, so the low latency of course and, um, and to offer this uh, reliability especially in the interfered environment like in factory. So here I have two, two examples, one which uh, it's, a, it's a small startup that we have incubated in, uh, in Nokia Paris-Saclay, which is named Spectral, and which, which are doing uh, um, uh, cloud augmented reality assistant. I see a lot of experience of, of that in the, in the, in the booth of, uh, of, the, of this event in Laval Virtual. Uh, here I think the, the main differentiators is to have the intelligence clearly in the in the in the edge cloud uh, providing the content which is remote remotely uh, uh, sent to the uh, technician uh, technician on the field in real time and the other one it's the management with uh, more intelligence artificial and digital assistant in order to have uh, uh, an access to all the knowledge of Nokia in order to manage the, the, the hardware directly on the field to be able to see all the sensors in real time, uh, to be able to uh, launch some actions for to repair and so on. So I would show you some example because I think it's quite interesting. Hello, Mika. Hello, I'm Mika, first digital assistant for telco operations. I have identified a performance issue with a server that requires your attention. Okay, Mika, show me. Mika, I'm at the servers. What did the analytics say again? Unit 10E is running continuously closer to target load capacity with 0.02% load increase rate. This server is an older generation model. Hardware upgrade is the most cost efficient solution. All right, migrate server's applications to a temporary location. Transfer in progress. Would you like me to assist you in the replacement process? Yes, please. I have powered down the server. The next step is to release the blue lock and pull out the server. A replacement server can now be installed to the rack. And the last uh, use case I want to present, I, I like this one because uh, we did it in Marseille with Orange. We launched the first 5G city in, uh, in France with Orange uh, uh, in December. Uh, in, and we did with uh, uh, Orange a lot of use case. And this one is quite a more uh, retail use case. It's uh, in order to, uh, which is named Holoparty, which has been done 
uh, we, uh, under, under the control of Orange. We have Emissive, which is a, a startup which are doing more the, the design of the, the use case and the technology of Mimesis that we see already for the concert, the hologram concert, and they are doing the uh, holographic part and they are using the new technology of Magic Leap for that with the, all the possibility to control the object with the, the end. And uh, the idea here is to sell, uh, to sell remotely, for example, one uh, customer come in the shop of Orange and uh, I'll be able to communicate using the, the Magic Leap with a, a remote uh, sales guy which are pr uh, presenting the product and he can see the products and see the characteristic of the product directly uh, through the hologram. So I can show you the, this last uh, use case. The quality of the video is quite but not, not so good because, uh, you know, it has been filmed directly in the Magic Leap uh, glasses because uh, today, very, uh, perhaps it's changed now, but uh, once month ago, there was no X-Cast possibility uh, to, to display on the screen what you can see in the, in the glasses. So we are obliged to make the camera directly in the, in the glasses. But you can see the hologram of the remote uh, guy and they can exchange. You see what is important with the 5G is this real time. Uh, and you see that it's completely fluid. There is no latency. The, the people can manipulate together in the same space uh, the object. So here they present uh, the last uh, Django uh, speaker, a Django speaker from, from Orange. So, as you see in, the, in my presentation, we, uh, we are not alone in this ecosystem. Uh, we are, uh, Nokia is only providing the technology for the connectivity, and we are working with operators which are addressing uh, some B2B customers uh, in order to see with them what could be the, the model that we have to sell tomorrow, what I can do with the 5G. And it's important for us to uh, attract the maximum of, of you, of partners, in order to make some uh, uh, models which are consistent on the market. And this is really uh, uh, what we are doing uh, every day. We are, for example, I mentioned Mimesis, I mentioned Spectral, but uh, we have 10, ten of uh, reference like that, which are uh, providing their technology, and we try to work together in some, on some pilot, on some trials, on some city, on some uh, things and it's very important and for that we have a uh, one open platform which is an open ecosystem oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't it's very randomly sorry he's, he's, uh, he wants to, to, to stop <laughs> And this, uh, we create this uh, month uh, a challenge in this platform of collaboration and innovation, which is on the air and VR. And we invite you, in fact, to if you are interested to register on this uh, link, it's open-ecosystem.org, open you can find on the internet. And you can, if you are interested, to collaborate with us. We are uh, in a completely, uh, you know, um, a kind of uh, uh, innovation process where we are uh, recruiting developers, startup, customers, experts, academia, suppliers, and people in order to work on different type of things, in order to create a, a use case, to pro prototype it, to test it, to refine it, to make some, uh, to try work also on the business model, because it's not only the problem to create something wow, what is important is that if we are able to, to sell it to the industry, 
if it, there is a model behind. And the, the end, it's market trials, and for, for you, the possibility also to sell it uh, to, uh, to your B2B uh, customer. So it's very important uh, to work together uh, on that. And my conclusion. So I show you the enablers of the 5G with a low latency. I speak about the network slicing for the quality of service. I see that you, you can see that we can add a lot of uh, piece in the cake. The 5G is not only radio. It's, an, it's, uh, it's also a problem of an issue of end-to-end. -end. And end-to-end -end means that we have to aggregate other services like intelligence, artificial intelligence, uh, you see uh, your technology, VR, uh, AR, the edge cloud, and so on. So all these things are contributing to, to have the better experience for consumer and business. It's really what we are uh, providing here, the possibility to use the 5G to bridge the, the physical world and the augmented world uh, in the digital world, uh, thanks to the uh, VR and AR and to use, of course, all this mechanism of haptics and tactile internet inside the model to, to bring the most impressive uh, immersion. Thank you very much for, for your time.